testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Market Speaks Live, the very podcast that gives you trending topics and other random things. I'm your host, Marcus. Let's get into some promotions and then we will start the show. So without further ado, people, welcome here to Market Speaks Live. Uh, If you could like this video, share this video in uh, if you can comment and subscribe, if you're new here, hit that bell icon to also you can get all of my no- notifications once I go live. Uh, also, please don't be shy. Write something in the comment section because I or the live chat, or and I will be putting putting your comments up just like how I have my prompt here in front of me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every Friday I do this here podcast called Marcus Speaks Live. Normally it's at eight, but you know started late happens anyway um so if you could you know fridays every friday 8 p.m eastern standard time is when market speaks live is live normally saturdays i have a stream but i am waiting to i'm I'm waiting for a game to come out so once that game comes out that's when i'll be starting back up with the market speaks live which is usually on Saturdays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right? So, people, if you could, once you have already subscribed to this here channel, hit that bell icon to all and then go to the description box. Find the Rumble link. If you don't have Rumble, download it. Download Rumble. And then come back to this link. Hit the link. Follow me over on Rumble as well. All right? Now, uh, if you want to come up and come talk to me, you can. Uh, you can hit the link. The number is no longer functional until I figure that out. I have n- numerous test runs that I have done, and I can't get it to work. So I'm going to have to go into some uh, some some uh, other measures of how to do it. I have one way that I want to do it, but it affects me from monitor- monitoring my show. So I'll have to figure something out or buy another device or something where I can both monitor the show and also use my phone as a um, 
device to uh, uh, have you guys call in. So with that comes rules, people. Hit, once you hit the link, you got to follow these three rules. Those three rules are you must be on camera at all times. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. I don't want to hear. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, be on camera on the backstage. You have to be on camera here on the backstage if you want to come up and come talk to me. All right. Now that's only for the backstage, and if you want to be shown to to the audience. Rule number two states: if you don't want to be, uh, if you don't want to be on camera, that that means to the audience. That is fine as well. Just use an avatar or whatever, uh, like a picture or something, and then I'll bring you up, all right? So, also, if you could, please mute all background noise. That means myself. That means, um, you know, whatever device you have me on, such as your computer, tablet, iPad, computer, TV, phone what have you turn me down or turn me off if you hit the link and then um use corded headphones if you can that helps for a better audio experience and um also with that being said please go to a nice secluded quiet spot in your house or you know anywhere that's quiet in your house so we can speak all right And the last thing that I have for you guys is, well, before that, the scrolling ticker that's down there ticking away, that is for you. Read over that, all right? And then the last thing that I have is like this video, subscribe if you're new here, hit that bell icon to all so you can get all my notifications once I go live or when I post a video, and or comment and share this to your social medias, friends and family, and whomever else you love now if you have ever seen my show if you have if you haven't seen my show what's up jay if you haven't seen my show before i like to do a little something that is that well damn i'm going too far into the show <laughs> um so if you have never seen my show i like to play videos all right so with that i also read an article to you with the topics that i have for you tonight both of those that I will be using are not mine, such as the article and the videos, because my show consists of three parts. Uh, articles, videos, and my own opinion. Not all in that order, but, you know, th that's what it is. But with that being said, all articles have been, uh, all articles and all videos are credited in the description box below. All articles have been altered from its original form to help with plagiarism. And for the videos, I have to follow fair use. If you don't know what fair use is, it's not only a YouTube policy, it's also the law. And I want to follow both in its entirety. So with that being said, I hope it plays. If it doesn't play, then I have another way. If you don't know what fair use is, well, this is what fair use is. All right, that's strange. Hold on. Do I have a turn down? No. Let's try that again. Oh, there's no audio coming out of my... Uh, Wow, there's no audio playing from my OBS. Alright, well, hold on, here we go. Hello everyone, I'm going to tell you about fair use. It's the law. Warning, federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, 
or exhibit portions of copyright motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. All right, y'all, that's fair use. Now, before we go on, I have to see if this is going to work. Because if this doesn't work, then today's show probably will have to be scrapped. Now, let's see if this works. Now, Jin Chen. Okay, that works. Now, I wonder why this didn't work. Hmm. Strange. Very strange. All right, anyway, people. Let's get into tonight's show. So before I start the show, I like to do a little thing called short banter. So tonight's short banter consists of me talking about, well, fresh and fit again. Let's get in, let's get this music going. Hold on. All right, there we go. So uh I spoke about Fresh and Fit last week when it comes to um, Fresh, Walter Weeks. He got a um, an escort pregnant. That's not the first stupid thing that he's done in his life, but, you know. So, Myron Gaines thought it would be a cool idea. If he uh, goes and um, supports his friend. Now, to me, that's a good friend. But the way that he did it was a bunch of foolishness, I should say. (laughs) He personally, well, let's get into the video. Now, Jin Chen, you are not credible. This could have been done behind closed doors. I set this up right. So, if you guys don't know what happened, this is what happened. So, Walter was dating a young lady uh, by the name of Jin Chen. Him and Jin Chen was dating for I have no idea how long. So, what they, so what happened? They spent you know some time together. I guess fresh was fucking the dog shit out out of her. I mean, just fucking the dog shit (laughs) out of her. Which is funny, because the nigga looked like a dog. Anyway, um, so with that being said, I played played you guys the audio last week of him basically crying, saying, I don't want a baby. I don't want to get get you pregnant. Just take the pill so we can move on because I don't want to be a father. Knowing that on their show, that's what they, they speak of. They speak of being good fathers and shit like that. Well, he dropped the ball on that already. So they, they can just scrap that out of their uh, talking points. Okay, so getting into today's video. Fresh, not fresh, fit. Myron Gaines thought it would be a smart idea to help his friend out when it comes to, uh, I, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. He basically went on live without Fresh to basically defend Fresh in a way that not only made the both of them look stupid, hold on, made Jin Chen look stupid, but also made both Fresh and Fit not only just the podcast, but them as individuals look like jackasses. Here we go. Now, Jin Chen, you are not credible. This could have been done behind closed doors. Y'all could have handled this like adults, but you wanted to run to the internet and illegally record him. You committed another felony, by the way. Okay? And and you best believe, I'm calling immigration on you. 100%. You, sh- you shouldn't even be here. You're in the United States committing crimes, and you committed crimes back in China as well. And we have proof of that. You are a fucking sex worker. You shouldn't even be here. You fucked up. You played yourself. You wanted the clout. Now you're going to get the clout. I'm going to make you famous. 
You thought that this was a fucking game. And that's irrefutable proof of everything I got. And I got more too. I'm not showing it all for obvious reasons. But the truth is the truth and it's come out. Now, Jin Chen, you are you sh you shouldn't even be here. You're in the United States. 100 you, you best believe. Another felony by the way. And illegally, I could have handled this like adults, but you wanted to run to the internet and illegally record him. You commit another felony. All right, that part. She illegally recorded fresh. That is false, Myron. Because you said in that same video that you did, that live that you did, you said that in Florida, both parties should know that they are being recorded. So basically the person recording and the person that is being recorded. Now, that same law is here in Maryland. If I record someone, I have to let them know, audio or visually, that I have to let them know that they are being recorded or, or unless that would be a felony or a misdemeanor. It's really a misdemeanor, to be honest. Now, that law is so frugal that it barely gets used. But if you come back here to the backstage, you'll see in parentheses I have, you will be recorded during this stream. Only because state law states that I have to let you know that. Now, with that being, with that being said, Myron said that in Florida, that both parties have to know that they are being recorded. Jin Chen, while making the recording, was in New York. New York law states only one party uh, uh, has to know that they are being recorded, which is me. Which means the person being the person that is doing the recording only has to know that they're being recorded. So, he said that she committed a felony. She did not commit a felony. That she did not have to tell him by being in the state of New York that she is recording Walter Weeks, a.k.a. Fresh. So, congratulations. You played yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now, they also claim that she is a sex worker. I, I can't say that that is true or not true. Because I have this here recording right here. Now let me set this up. Now, I'm guessing this is her uh, doing some some business with a a uh, a client. Maybe I don't know. This is strange that they even have this uh, material, and this is also strange that. Well, the strange part of it is, how the hell did they get it? Did she give it to, to to Fresh willingly, or did Fresh go in her phone and take it? Now, what what you will hear in this uh, recording is a, a man that is basically dubbing, well, not dubbing his voice. A man's voice is basically altered to, you know, so his identity isn't, um... So his identity. So, so we don't know his identity. And you will also hear Jin Chen basically orchestrate her. You know how how much you know the puss is. Bruh. Just saying. Anyway, this is this is the entire video. No. No. Which one's for? Do you have cash? I would prefer to pay you half. First, and then half after. It's never worked out good when I've paid off. Why? I'm here. What are you worried about? One time, I paid it. You're all up front. I was completely up. She said she came up three times and that she couldn't do it anymore. So, you're going to do it like 10 times? Two weeks? I have been scammed in the past. Yeah, but I'm a girl. I need to be more secure. If you're not making excuses. If you guys listen to the voice pattern of the distorted voice, it kind of sounds like Andrew Tate. Now, that's just my own take. All right? That's just my own take. That I feel as though that it sounds like fresh and fit. 
I have the I have this up loud enough. I believe I do. I have to, let me turn up my uh, phone real fast to see if it's loud enough. But if you listen to the the uh, person's voice pattern, it sounds like Andrew Tate. That means you are not willing to pay. I would like to appreciate you borrowing me for like an hour or so. It's not just to be fun. But yeah, usually I'll pay for two, three, four hours. I'll stop. We stop for maybe 30 minutes or less. I cannot stay for two or three hours. You can't stay for two or three hours. I can't stay, but I cannot have sex for two and three hours. Like, who can do that? It's not just sex for two and three hours. You will have to trust me on this. You will not be uncomfortable. You will not be painful. If you are, you may go. I will not force you to stay. And I will stay here for one hour. One hour doesn't mean you're only going to stay for one hour. Then I will stay here for one hour tonight. Because for you, one hour is enough. You said two, three hours. I cannot stay for two or three hours. And you can't stay for two or three hours. I can't. Honestly, the onus is on you to make this experience wonderful so that I will want to see you again. Okay, so let's get started. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Now, that was her basically getting, you know, doing business. Basically, she said she wants cash. The person, which the person said PayPal. Why? Because that's coming from your account. So you're soliciting sex, which is a crime through your bank or, or, or through the banking system at large. And you solicit sex. Okay. Now I said it sounded like Andrew Tate. I don't know if it's Andrew Tate or not, but it sound the voice patterns sound like Andrew Tate. Now, also with that being said, uh, I guess she he wired some money over through PayPal because it says, "Firstly, do you take PayPal?" Right, and then let's see, person says. Cash, oh, I guess she says cash only. Wait a minute. Oh, I guess the I guess the guy said first, do you take PayPal? She says cash only. Then it says uh, no WeChat transfer. So I guess she said we we chat chance uh, transfer because over I guess over in um China China they use WeChat. So she asked, do you have cash? Uh, I'm guessing he says half first, or she says half first, and I guess she'll get the rest later and then half after. So basically, you know, give me a security deposit for the work and then give me the rest when we're done. Understandable. All right. Uh, good. When I pay up front, never. Hold on. Okay, half first. Half after it's never worked out. Uh, good when I pay up front. Uh, never. I don't know what that means. Why? What are you worried about? One time. Is there something for that? One time. I paid the girl. I paid. I paid the girl up front. I was pleasuring her. She said she came like three times. No one gives a fuck about that. And that couldn't do any... Hold on. And that she couldn't do it anymore. So are you going to do it uh, two to three times? Uh, let's see. To me... Question mark. I have been scammed in the past. And then, yeah, but I'm a girl... Uh, I need to be more secure. Uh, see if you're not making excuses. Uh, that means you are not willing to pay. So basically, you know, it's just a whole bunch of shit going on with this um, with this transaction. I'm guessing the person is thinking that she's she's the cops and he's about to get set up. But, you know, he asked, do you take PayPal? Hold on. 
gonna have to account for that money somewhere. But anyway, moving on. So I have another video. Uh, is that the one? Nah, I'm gonna do that one last. Things down here. Booty. Um, let's see. That was for a um <laughs> that big old booty you saw. That was for a story I was gonna do last week, but then I just scrapped it. I was like, nah, never mind. I ain't gonna do it. All right, so this is the video. Now, Agent Queen again. Along with all of this, uh, I guess Fresh, you know, with the audio, Fresh told her, you know, get rid of the baby, go to the doctors and all that. He's like, nah, I don't want to kill baby, you know, baby inside me, baby need love and all that. Baby needs love me long time, all that, you know, all that, all that shit, whatever. So, um... Fresh basically said he he's never he never dated her, and as well he never told her that he loved her. A lot of Tactor Test said that was a lie, <laughs> <laughs> and here's proof, right here. This was a great trip, happy to see my lovely Asian queen again. Uh, but you know, as Time passes. We must say farewells for a short period of time until mm -hmm. she comes back. So can't wait to see her back here in Miami. Uh, I brought her. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Let me think. This was a great. Oh, you never said you loved her, right? Whatever. Anyway, so he he's basically making himself look like a fool once again. This hasn't been the, the first time he's made himself look like a fool. The first time he made himself look like a fool, he said that he has never been on the website called Seeking Arrangements. Well, <laughs> a lot of detective tests said that was a lie. <laughs> Because that girl, uh, I forgot what Shorty's name. Yeah, I forgot Shorty's name. But let's just call her Abigail. Abigail basically uh, said that she wasn't interested in him. She just wanted the money. There was several videos floating around of him and her and him trying to kiss her. And she was dodging them, them lips like it was the play. Like she, he would lean in the kitchen, she'd be like, whoa, nigga, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nah, we ain't signed up for that. Like, what you doing? Chill out. That's not what we do around here. So, along with that, along with that, you know, got brought up on their show. And the viewers basically asked, was that his girlfriend? He said no. Or no, he said yes to, to that question. When they asked her, I guess in her DMs and her, I, I think she did podcasts as well, just like uh, Jen here. She said, no, we weren't dating. He was just giving me money. So basically, she was his his sugar baby. All right. When it comes to Jin Chen, uh, Fresh said, uh, oh, oh, no. During the live, Fit did, Myron. Fit basically was... Uh, <laughs> Myron was basically taken up for her in um in 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 fresh. 
he, he said, I told her, I told him that this was stupid and you shouldn't do it. And, and why are you doing this to yourself? You're fucking up the brand, blah, 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 blah. But then when viewers were going in there, basically telling them like, y'all are looking like some simp ass motherfuckers. And how, how could y'all lie to us like this? And he, they was basically saying, well, we didn't lie to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, so, okay. Just like the first, the first chick I was talking about. Fresh bought that girl, a- Abigail, um, necklaces and bracelets and shit like that. And then he came out and said, well, I didn't buy her that stuff. Okay, fast forward to Jen. She got, uh, what, is, what was it, uh, a $30,000 tennis bracelet? Th- instead of this fool just saying, I never bought her anything, this motherfucker says, no, nah, we went half on it. What? That makes it better? So, anyway. As I said last week, as I said last week, fresh. Shut. Oh, oh, hold on. Before I get there, before I get there, uh, I was watching a video before I came on, and and I forgot the girl's name. She basically, when it came up about the pregnancy stuff that she's shown on. Instagram live or TikTok live or whatever. Uh, she showed her um, her doctor's uh, documentation when she went to the doctors. Um, so it says she was three to four weeks pregnant and she also had uh, ultrasounds. Now, the girl said that, the girl in the video said that uh, ultrasounds are only taken five weeks into the pregnancy so it's a possibility this woman's lying to fresh saying that she's pregnant that's also their sentiments as well both myron and and uh walter's sentiments of it's a lie she's not really pregnant whatever but it doesn't it doesn't make it better as well because their whole thing is don't fuck with 304s don't fuck with 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 um with sluts and stuff like that. Don't fuck with Instagram moms. But they turn around and they do exactly what they tell you guys not to fuck with. They turn around and do it themselves. Such as being on Seeking Arrangements, which is a sugar baby website. Um, what else? Fucking these random uh uh Facebook. I mean, not Facebook, Instagram models. Which ain't nothing wrong with you fucking them them chicks. Like, you just don't want to try to make a future with these females. It's fine to have sex with those women. It's fine. Like, if you're if you're somewhere where they're at, such as whatever city, L.A., Miami, New York, whatever. If you're in their in their vicinity and you go to talk to them, you try and fuck, and they with it. Cool. Nobody gets hurt. Everybody's, you know, just don't pay for it. That's what I would say. As a man, I'm telling y'all, you don't got to pay for pussy. Pussy's like a bowl of M&M's. It's just there. You can reach your hand in the bowl whenever you want. So... Like I said last week, Fresh, just deal with the situation at hand. If you got this girl pregnant, she's taking you for child support. And it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to know that uh, you think that this girl would not uh, keep the baby. Or whatever. You're insane. Uh, I don't want the video. I just want the lyrics. 
because I want I want to read uh, I want to read y'all the lyrics of Big Boy's um, verse on International Players Anthem because. Because it's like <laughs> like it's it's uh it's it's he foreshadowed a lot of things in his verse. Hold on. Alright, I got it right here on genius. Okay, they don't have it there, so I'll look for it somewhere else. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Here. All right. So, where's Big Boy's verse? That's Bum B. Big Boy coming right after. So, he starts off by saying, any many decision with precision, I pick my selection on who I choose to be with. That's exactly what I do. I'm very picky with who I am with. Like, it's like I am so picky with the females that I want around. Me. Like, it's, it's ridiculous how picky I am with, with women. All right. Girl, don't touch my protection. I know, I know you want it to slip, right? So, for many years, rappers have been talking about women poking holes in condoms because you know they rich, they got money, and they want them. And and, and the woman wants a baby by a rapper because she knows she's going to be getting paid thousands or not just rappers, but just rich men in general. They know they're going to be getting paid thousands or millions of dollars if they get pregnant by a rich motherfucker. All right. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So he said, but slipping is something I don't do tipping for life. That's like making making it rain every month on schedule. Like, uh, let me tell you, get your parasol umbrella because it's going to be wetter. Basically meaning you're going to be paying child support. That's what he's saying right there. Uh, so, but slipping is something that I don't do. Tipping for life, that's like making it rain every month on schedule. That means your child support payments come every month. But like, either if you like it or not, they have to come or you're going to get locked up. All right. So. So he says it right here. Better prepare. Better prepare for C support. She's supposed to spend it on that baby. But we uh, but we see she don't. Uh, but she see, but we see that she don't, right? So basically, prepare yourself for child support. She's supposed to spend it on the baby, but we know that she don't. She gonna be spending it on her hair, new outfits, and shit like that. Totally neglecting the child of whatever that the child means, and then calling you up saying that the baby ain't got shit. All right. So. <laughs> So in the, in the, in the song they he says as Paul McCartney the lawyers couldn't stop him slaughtered slaughter all the uh, pockets had to tire to a rocket basically meaning that I believe once they once she once she left him she was on a uh, she got on a um I think I think she was dating some dude thing like an astronaut or something and then you know she prepared herself to go into space and all that and all that bullshit but anyway that was just him being funny so here's the ending part of the whole song of of the whole uh verse right here he goes send her into outer space i know he wish he could because he paying 20k a day that bitch is eating good
Now, 20K a day. They didn't have any kids together, Paul McCartney and, and that, that woman he was with that, that had the, uh, the peg leg. But the alimony payments he was paying uh, for was fucking outrageous. I forgot how much he, he was paying her a year. It was in the million somewhere, though. All right. So then he goes, like an infant on double D titty just getting plump. Because uh, you miscalculated the next two to the last pump. Meaning, when you were supposed to be, when you were supposed to pull out, pussy was too damn good. So you busted in her. So, he, he has to tell him, motherfucker, just like I told Fresh last week. Dump, dump in the guts, raw from the giddy up. Better choose the right one or pick Pick the kitties up. Shit. Basically stating that, nigga, come on now. If you don't choose the right woman, that's the reason why in the first verse, I mean, the, the first part uh, the first part of the verse, he said that you got to be picky with, uh, with, the, with whoever you choose. You got to be picky. Just because you got game and just because you can talk the draws off any woman that you know doesn't mean that you should be. You got to be picky with the with, with your selection of women. You got to be picky with the women that are around you. So with the last verse, he says, dump, dump in the guts from the giddy up. Choose, choose the right one or pick, pick the kitties up. And he didn't. <laughs> he thought it would be cool to go raw in this chick and now look at him. Looking like a pure retard online. Not only that, his audience has had enough of both fresh and fit because they say all that they can about, well, you know, this, this and that and, you know, don't fuck with these women. Well, you're doing exactly what you're telling everybody else not to do. It's time for a rebrand. That's all I got to say to him. It's time for a rebrand. So that concludes that part of short banter. I know it went a little long, but I, I got two more topics for short banter. OJ Simpson died uh, Wednesday. And y'all was so damn cutthroat in them Twitter fucking threads. Y'all was so cutthroat. I took a stab at it my damn self. I ain't gonna lie. I took a stab at it. Um, I was trying to chuck the life out of, out of a motherfucker on there with the shit that I was saying. Because the shit I was saying was funny as hell. One post I put... Uh, I forgot what the person said. I said, yo, this post is cutthroat. So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so condolences to his family. His family said that they wish for privacy, but a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all in there was voicing y'all's opinion about the man, and y'all didn't even know him. Saying he's he's just the most vile person in the world, and I'm glad that he's dead, and all this bullshit. It's like, god damn. I wonder what a motherfucker gonna say when I die. Anyway. Uh, like I said, condolences to OJ's family and all that uh, for losing, you know, y'all's father. Uh, the evidence basically showed that he didn't he didn't do it because if the glove didn't fit, you must have quit. Anyway, last thing. Uh, also Wednesday, my five year channel anniversary was going on. I didn't celebrate. I was at work, but it has been five whole years since I've been doing this here channel. Uh, during that time, within this five years, I've, I've quit a couple times. I've doubted myself a few times, but I keep going. Because I know once I get this shit up and going and once people start watching me by the thousands live, I ain't got shit to worry about. So... Big ups to me. 
Damn, son, where'd you find this? All right. Uh, that concludes tonight's short banter. Let me get these fools off the camera. So, uh, let's get into tonight's main topic of the night. Let me get everything ready first. Let me uh, set this up so I have it in front of me as we speak. So, pull, pull it up, so... I'm not a lawyer, but there's a new lawsuit. All right. We'll get to that video in just a second, but before we do, um, before we do, so tonight's main topic, well, y'all know what tonight's main topic is about, but tonight's main topic of the week's overview is attorney Tyrone Blackburn is burned by a New York judge. So, if you guys don't know, Tyrone Blackburn is the um, is the attorney in all of these. Well, not all of them. I would say what the last two, I believe, of Diddy's uh, accusers. He's also the lawyer on uh, Christian Combs's case, and um, he's also went after a few other. Um, he's also went after a few other uh, stars as well. But tonight's article I get from Billboard, and it's state in the title of this is "Lawyer Behind Diddy Sec- uh, Essay Cases." Criticized by judge over salacious violence. So, um, we are gonna. I'm gonna play a video, and the things that is going to come up in this video is pretty crazy. Now, I will warn you. Does have a little bit of information in here that could be harmful to children and such, and lack thereof. But. You know, if you allow your kids to watch stuff like this, hey, cool. But if you look at my description box, I do have a disclaimer. So here we go. I'm not a lawyer, but there's a new lawsuit in the Diddy universe. But this time it was filed against Christian Combs, Diddy's son, Diddy, and some John and Jane Doe's. Now, before I tell you what is alleged in this lawsuit, I first want to tell you about the attorney that filed this lawsuit. Because it's getting messy with the attorneys. So this is Tyrone Blackburn. He is the attorney representing the plaintiff in this new lawsuit, but he also represents Rodney Jones. And if you don't remember, Rodney Jones is the plaintiff in the lawsuit that was filed back in February and was recently amended. That lawsuit has a number of defendants, including Diddy, Justin Combs, Cuba Gooding Jr., as well as Motown Records, Universal Music Group, and the CEO of Universal Music Group, whose name is Lucian Charles Grange. Okay, now follow me because this might be a ride. So for the last couple months, since that Rodney Jones lawsuit was initially filed, there has been a lot of back and forth between Tyrone Blackburn and the attorney that represents Lucian Grange, Motown Records, and UMG. That attorney's name is David, and again, he represents all three of them, Motown Records, UMG, and Lucian Grange. So after some back and forth, Donald sent a scathing and shady letter addressed to Tyrone, basically saying that, that the lawsuit he filed on behalf of Rodney Jones is completely and demonstrably fabricated and untrue. And just to be clear, David speaking specifically about the claims against his clients. He is not talking about the claims against Diddy or anybody else in that lawsuit. Okay, so here's the letter that Donald sent, and I'm going to read just a couple pieces from it. Quote, this just scratches the surface of your complete failure to conduct anything remotely resembling a reasonable inquiry into the facts before filing a pleading filled with offensively false accusations. Donald goes on to say that the RICO allegations are wholly deficient, substituting nonspecific group allegations and conclusions for a single factual allegations connecting our clients to your imagined over 20 year alleged criminal enterprise in which our clients have never had any involvement whatsoever. Another part of the letter says, quote, 
it is not merely that the entirety of the complaint as it pertains to our clients is scandalously false, accusing our clients of engaging in criminal activity when the accusations have not the slightest factual basis. It is that you indisputably did not conduct the slightest inquiry into the facts. Instead, finding it expedient to spew this unadulterated mass of baseless accusations as to which you were utterly indifferent to the truth. Damn. In a publicly filed complaint, the sheer recklessness of your complaint goes beyond any complaint I have seen in nearly 50 years of litigating in the federal and state courts in New York. That superlative is no compliment. I intend to examine whether, in addition to the other offenses you have committed, you are also guilty of ethical violations in the filing of this complaint, which I believe you most certainly are. Dang. <laughs> Shit. So that judge is roasting the shit out of Tyrone. So I'm going to leave this video up because I'm still going to need it. But we'll get into uh, the article until we get to that part that I need the rest of this for. Now, an attorney who filed, uh, hold on, an attorney who filed one of the several essay lawsuits against Diddy. Or Sean Diddy Combs, or Sean Puffy Combs, or Sean P. Diddy Combs, or Sean Love Combs, or Sean Brother Love Combs, or Sean Beloved on Freak Mills uh, Combs, or, you know, wh wh whoever you want to call this man, uh, is now facing potential discipline himself after a federal judge in another case sharply criticized him for filing suits designed to garner media attention and embarrassed defendants. In an, in an order issued Wednesday, April the 3rd, in a uh, separate lawsuit, Judge Denise Coote, I guess that's how you would say her name, Coote, uh, referred Tyrone Blackburn to the Grievance Committee for New York's Federal Court District and Entity uh, an entity that decides whether attorneys have violated court rules. She cited his conduct in five different lawsuits, saying Blackburn's filings in those cases had featured glaring deficiencies. A reasonable, uh, a reasonable inference in, in, uh, yeah, inference from Blackburn's pattern of behavior is that he improperly files cases in federal court to garner media attention, em uh, embarrass embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Judge Coop wrote, uh, "Indeed, his submission to this court has been rife with." Uh, disturbing allegations against the defendants in defense defense counsel. The order, which came in a legal malpractice lawsuit, Blackburn filed last year, uh, referred him to the grievance committee for the Southern District of New York, of which that's where the, um, that's where his, uh, 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 uh that's where, that's where Diddy's raid came from. Was the Southern District of New York. So, you know, those lawyers basically got together and looked into if this is true. So they got the FBI on the horn, and the FBI got Homeland Security on the horn. And then the Homeland Security, they, uh. They planned the raid. They executed the raid. Now, both Diddy and um, Diddy and his children now, his sons, uh, have cases on because of this this reason. Now, let's see. Uh, well, district court. District. Okay, so the Southern District of New York for such actions as it deems appropriate. Judge Coote's ruling is is notable because Blackburn is currently serving as lead counsel to 
Rodney Jones, or Little Rod, a producer who filed a sweeping abuse lawsuit against Combs in February. The lawsuit is one of several such cases against Combs in addition to a federal criminal investigation that led to raids of his homes last month. Combs has strongly denied all allegations of wrongdoing in in, in, an email to Billboard on Thursday, Blackburn said, not sure how this is all... not sure how this at all relevant to Rodney Jones, Rodney Jones's case or any other case I have. This will not have any impact on my ability to proceed to proceed in Mr. Jones's case. Although Judge Coote's decision was a referral to the Southern District uh, of New York's grievance committee and not a sanction i plan on appealing the decision in his lawsuit last month jones accused combs i can take this down jones accused combs of repeated essay and harassment with jones was uh, while jones was working as a producer on the rappers 2003 2023 the love album off the grid but he also went further claiming that diddy and others had violated the racketeer influence in uh, corrupt organization act the federal rico statute best known for criminal uh criminal cases against the mafia as part of as part of these as part of these where am i at I'm sorry, as part of those claims, he named several other uh, prominent people as members of the alleged illegal conspiracy, including Universal, Universal Music Group CEO, Lucian Grange, and former Motown CEO, uh, what's her name, Uh, Ethiopia Habitimarum. I fucked that whole last name up but hey that's what her her last name is have a team room <laughs> blackburn has all has all already filed or i'm sorry face scrutiny over the accusations filed on jones's behalf and in, in her response to lawsuit combs combs's attorney uh sean holly took took the unusual step of calling out her opposing counsel by name, saying that Blackburn had ignored evidence of Combs uh, innocence before filing the case. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones, uh, Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. Holly said at the time, we will address these outlandish outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate actions against those who make them. So basically, hell, let me just stop there real fast. I'll have her, let's see, um, let's do it like this. So, you guys have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So, did you guys hear me last week when I said that Diddy is going after anyone and everyone who is talking about this? Diddy's basically throwing his hat in the ring. But he's not coming out publicly. Because that would just be stupid on his behalf. But behind closed doors, Diddy is fighting back by way of his attorney. Now, his attorney, uh, uh, Holly, Sean Holly, basically is is, uh, letting everyone know in that last statement I just read 
that anyone and everyone who basically speaks falsely about Mr. Combs, aka P. Diddy, will face the consequences. So if you guys look at every podcaster and every blogger, or vlogger, I should say, every vlogger out here, they're basically turning coat. They're basically say, <laughs> they're basically backtracking. They're basically making themselves look as if they've never said any salacious things about um, uh, about P Diddy. So, I've watched several of these podcasters basically just backpedal. Sh- Cheryl's World's doing it. Um. Uh, I believe um, Make It Make Sense is also doing it. Um, who else is doing it? Uh, I want I want to say Storm, but I don't think Storm has backed down about this. I think he still is talking about this. But a lot of people are stopping, like, just entirely talking about these Diddy allegations at all because... Since Sean Holly has said, excuse me, excuse me, that basically that we will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate actions against those who make them. So everybody who's out here basically talking crazy, saying that, oh, I think Diddy did it and uh, it's it, uh, Diddy is out here doing this shit, and he knows he's out here doing this shit. Look, Sean Holly got the full court press on all of these motherfuckers next right now. Now, if you like me, where I'm just where I, I I ask questions or the things that I do have, which are my opinion, I make them funny. Now, when I get serious, though, I still ask questions. That's just like last week when I was talking about the the, uh, the uh, Carly Russell thing, right? Where at the end of that topic, I, uh, I played a video of uh, the newscasters bringing up a law that is going to go into place for whoever lies about being kidnapped. They'll be charged with the full extent of the law. So my question to that was, I wonder if they'll be able to open up Carly's case again and charge and try her again. Now, that's a question. That's not, well, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's not just a question. It's a, damn, the word just left me, but it's, it's a question. I'm asking a question of me asking I wonder if they'll be able to reopen Carly Russell's case and recharge her and retry her since the law will be in effect, I think, at the end of this year, if not the beginning of next year. So it was only a question. That's not me saying, well, she's going to get charged and they're going to put her in jail. That's an opinion. So I'm not worried. To be honest, because preferably I ain't got shit. So what can you take? What you gonna garner my wages every goddamn month? Whatever. I'll know where to hide it, just like Diddy knows where to hide his cash. So I'm just saying. But a lot of these uh, YouTubers are backpedaling. Because now they're now now they're getting scared. They're they're turning they're turning tail to other topics now. You gotta put the you still gotta put the foot on the neck of people like Diddy because if he gets away with this, then we all will know that this is how shit is ran in these spaces of these of these businesses, such as the music industry. We already know that it happens in the film industry. So we will know. And we also know that it kind of happens on Capitol Hill. 
So since we know this information, but we can't make salacious attempts of trying to let people know about this. Well, I would say our hands are tied, but their hands are tied. My hands aren't tied. Because number one, I don't make money off of this, off of YouTube. I don't make money off it, off of this. I do this for, for fun. But I also do know that they just can't go after everybody who talks about this. Like, they got to have some skin in the game a little bit. They should... My whole thing is Sean should be focusing on the case itself because it was said that Cassie is working with federal agents. Cassie was the very first person to come out with a lawsuit of which Diddy uh, uh, settled less than 12 hours later. So if she's working with the feds and she's telling telling them the inner workings of of Diddy's enterprise, then Diddy's already fucked. Because number one, he paid less than 12 hours later. I believe the lawsuit came out six the, the day before the, the day, uh, that Thursday prior that Friday before six the uh the whatever the amount of money that he paid out was paid now why was it paid people may ask who knows why it was paid but did he have to have had a good reason to pay cassie out less than 12 hours after the lawsuit was dropped And now that we know that Cassie is working with federal agents, allegedly, Little Rod's lawsuit could look like, well, Cassie's lawsuit, I should say, could look like child's play next to Little Rod's lawsuit that basically states that he was being sexual, sexually harassed, of which Cassie's lawsuit stated that uh, that he was pimping her, R-wording her, and, and physically abusing her. Well, seems as though that little Rod had pictures in the lawsuit of which they said that should have been held for evidence. I understand. Little Rod also said he has video evidence. He hasn't yet turned it over, of which a lot of them on here are basically stating that if he has it, why didn't he just turn it over to um to uh what the the LAP not the LAPD the uh NYPD and all that or, or or the feds? I'm pretty sure the feds have to subpoena Little Rod to hand over those those doc well not documents but those videos and other audio tapes that's on his phone. I'm pretty sure they have to go through certain steps. To uh, to uh, to retrieve that stuff that Little Rod is stating that he has. Make sure he just can't just hand it over because if it gets presented in court, and I'm pretty sure if it doesn't have any legal documentation behind it, of which they submitted forms to, they submitted forms to basically identify what it is. And also have a judge sign off on it to where it can be presented in court. Then I'm sure that Little Rod just can't hand over videotapes and, and audio tapes from his phone that basically shows Diddy doing whatever the hell he was doing. So I want them to stop it with the bullshit. I'm moving on to other topics because this shit's getting played out and. And everybody's basically speculating, no, you're scared because his lawyer basically said he's that they're going after any and everybody. Now, let's say I get uh, uh, subpoenaed in the court, knock on wood, because I've been talking about this. I won't be worried because once they see all of my videos, they'll see that I'm only asking questions. So... 
Anyway, let's move on. Uh, let's see. Anyone, anyone? Let's see. Where am I at? Okay. So, last week, attorneys for U- UMG took a, a similar aim at Blackbird, arguing that uh, Grange had utterly nothing to do with the allegations against Diddy. The label's lawyers said uh, said the claims were so off, uh, offensively false that they would seek to punish Blackburn himself for filing them. Uh, a license to practice law is a privilege, wrote Donald Zacharin. So that's this guy. Hold on. That's this guy. A longtime music industry litigator who represents UMG and Grange. Mr. Blackburn's plaintiff's uh, plaintiff's lawyer has misused the license to self-promote uh, Grant. Need help with this word. Hold on. Uh, where is it? Right here. Oh. Okay, so self-promote gratuitously, falsely, and recklessly accusing the UMG defendants of criminal behavior. UMG's filing last week said that a company would seek legal legal sanctions against Blackburn under federal law, I mean federal rule 11, which requires lawyers to make a reasonable inquiry into allegations they file in court. That's the same rule that Judge Cope cited Wednesday in her ruling against Blackburn, saying his actions his actions in this and prior cases indicate a repeated fail, uh, failure to meet his Rule 11 obligations. Okay, so let's stop there. So he so Blackburn has has so there was a first iteration of of Little Rod's lawsuit, which had Diddy, Diddy Bad Boy Entertainment, um, L- Lucian, Ethiopia, Motown, UMG, Love Records, Bad Boy Entertainment, if I didn't already say that, and um, I believe um, Justin Combs w- was in that lawsuit. Okay. So, there was... So, so, so the lawsuit got revised. So it took off Lucian Grange, Ethiopia, Motown, and Christian, I believe, in the lawsuit. So where it was just Diddy and Bad Boy Entertainment and Love Records and all that, right? So another revisement has happened. So which was put back? So what got put back on there was. Lucian Grange, Ethiopia, and Motown. And I believe Universal Music Group got taken off. So, in the revisement is basically bringing certain information back in or or taken away. So, all of the loss so all the lawsuit, right? The lawsuit I believe in the beginning had what? 40 some odd pages, 50 some odd pages. Then it got dropped again to what? Or no, I think it was like 50 some odd pages at first. Then it was like 40 some odd, some odd pages. Now it's at 31 pages, the lawsuit. And some extra added information. I don't have the lawsuit yet. I'll get it if. There's another topic about this I'll talk about next week. But what we're not realizing here is that if Diddy has done the things that is said in this lawsuit, then I think we should all believe the the uh the victims such as Little Rod. Now, a lot of people 
a lot of YouTubers, a lot of bloggers, vloggers, a lot of podcasters. Went from believing Little Rod to disbelieving Little Rod. When it was hot news, oh, well, Little Rod's believable. I believe all this stuff that happened. Let's go back and just go back and watch whoever your favorite podcaster is who has spoken about this that has changed their tune. Go back to those old videos of theirs, and I bet you you'll hear them say everything that I just said that they said. So now that they have turned coat because of Sean Holly, it's like, come on now. Like, what are we doing here? So we can only wait until... Our grand jury is brought up to look at all the evidence. And then if Diddy is tried in federal court. Now, with federal court, if no one knows, which you should know by now, but in federal court, there are no cameras. There is no audio devices. There's only sketches. And people who have wrote notes that will come on to their YouTube channels or on the TMZ and tell the play-by-play of what happened in the court that that day. So we can only wait. Of which I have said plenty of times, time will tell, and we can only wait to see what happens. So moving along. And arriving at that conclusion, the judge cited multiple instances in which Blackburn allegedly filed cases in the wrong court without properly investigating whether it was the right jurisdiction, as well as an incident in which he called a defense attorney a disgusting racist and admit to, I'm saying, admit a dispute over picking a mediator. The judge also cited an allegation from an opposing lawyer that Blackburn has specifically filed a case in federal court rather than state court because doing doing so would make the press more likely to pick up on it. So basically, if he did place it in, in, in the wrong court or whatever, he was basically trying to, I guess he, this is what uh, Tyrone was trying to do. He was trying to basically make it look like that the person that he's going against is in more trouble than w- what it seems that they're uh, th- that they're in. So, yeah, I would say he's probably is playing playing it up a little bit. Like, look at this. Like, it's going to go to federal court. Nobody's going to know what exactly is going on. So everybody's going to have to speculate what's going on. Now, I can see if he's doing that. But if he isn't doing that, and this is all a sham to begin with of the judge going after him and these other lawyers going after him, then I don't know what the problem is. If this is what is real, this is what his clients have told him because you got to have it because the lawyer has to have an interview with his client to basically show him or show, yeah, show them that, um, yeah, basically show them that, you know, yeah, you know, this is what really happened. This is the real, like, like I'm not lying to you, all this other shit. So, so yeah. All right, so where am I at now? Okay, so significant resources have been spent by judges of the court in defendants named in actions. He, uh, he has filed to address glaring de- uh, deficiencies in his filings. Judge Coop wrote in her ruling on Wednesday, a referral to this to this court's grievance committee is warranted. It's unclear how long such a case will take before the grievance committee renders a decision or what kind of disciplinary uh, measures the body uh, might hand down. So basically, we're waiting. What's going on? That's what we're doing right now. We're just waiting. All right? So we're going to get back to this video. We're going to let it play out, and then I'm going to get to the next part of this. You don't want to miss it.
Okay, last quote. We understand as well that you personally provided advanced copies of this complaint to the press. In doing so under New York law and potentially California law, you have forfeited whatever benefits of the litigation privilege that might arguably attend to the filing of a knowingly false pleading and have subjected yourself and your client to well-founded defamation claims. Depending on how swiftly you withdraw or amend this complaint to delete all reference to our clients, we will evaluate when and where they will proceed against you and your client. It's obviously pissed. Okay, you ready for the short version? David's saying that Tyrone filed this lawsuit knowing that it was BS against the clients. And that is a Rule 11 violation. So let's talk about Rule 11. Rule 11 is a federal rule that when you file a lawsuit, you as the attorney are acknowledging and verifying that you have done a reasonable amount of investigating the claims or like looking into them before filing. It also says that by filing a lawsuit, attorneys are agreeing that the suit is not for any improper use, such as to harass or increase costs. And the attorneys further certify to the court that the claims are warranted by law and that the allegations are supported by evidence. So again, David is saying Tyrone included his clients knowing that the allegations against them specifically are false and unsupported by evidence, and he did it for the purpose of media attention. Now here's where things get sticky. Tyrone Blackburn has another case in the Southern District of New York. And the judge in that case just made an order saying the same thing about Tyrone. In one part of the order, the judge writes, Tyrone Blackburn has, as he admits, failed to meet his Rule 11 obligations in this case. It appears that this is a part of a pattern. The court declines to impose sanctions pursuant to Rule 11 or its inherent power, but will refer him to this court's grievance committee. There is a basis to believe that Blackburn is filing cases in this district without diligently investigating the existence of either jurisdiction or venue as required by Rule 11. Then the judge kind of goes over Rule 11 that by filing any motions, lawsuits, or anything to the court, an attorney is certifying that to the best of his or her knowledge, information, and belief, they have done a reasonable amount of investigating the suit or the motion for any improper use. The judge continues on saying that at the March 5th conference for this particular case, defense counsel reported that Tyrone Blackburn had told her he filed this case in federal court because doing so would make the press more likely to pick it up. A reasonable inference from Blackburn's pattern of behavior is that he improperly files cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Indeed, his submissions to this court have been rife with disturbing allegations against the defendants and defense counsel. So while the judge did not sanction Blackburn, he was referred to the grievance committee of the district for whatever action they deem appropriate. So all of this is happening in this other case that Tyrone Blackburn has. But last week, David, the attorney representing Motown, UMG, and Lucien Grange, found out about that order. And so he wrote a letter to the judge that's overseeing the Diddy case. That's basically, you see what Tyrone is getting in trouble for doing in this case? That's basically what he's doing here and what I've been saying that he's doing here. In this new letter, David ends his name painful obvious that Mr. Blackburn believes he is free to flagrantly violate Rule 11 in furtherance of trying to garner press attention for himself without regard for the truth and without regard for the human consequences of his conduct. We have served Mr. Blackburn with a Rule 11 motion, but this court has the inherent power to address Mr. Blackburn's conduct, and, and we believe that Judge Coates' opinion from the other case and the facts set forth therein are relevant for this court's consideration. Ciao. So just to be clear, all of this has no bearing on the federal criminal investigation that's happening, but it definitely may have an impact on this Rodney Jones lawsuit and potentially this new lawsuit that's been filed against Christian Combs, Diddy, and the Jane and John Doe's. All right. So now y'all want me to tell you about the new lawsuit against Christian Combs? Come back. I'll make another video. All right. So, let me set up the next video. I'm thinking... So, um, basically, is what's going on is that just because the state um, civil case that Little Rod has with uh, Diddy has nothing to do with what the feds are doing. So, feds had their tip of Diddy having um, or engaging, engaging in unlawful acts. So, since that has passed over someone's desk over at the FBI, they're pursuing, 
they're pursuing this case. They're calling in witnesses of people that when they took all those electronics, even his hard his uh his his servers and hard drives and his security footage, everyone who they see on those tapes are going to be called in for question for questioning. So since they will be called in for questioning, <clears throat> they're gonna need their lawyer, number one. Uh, it's not as if it's like it's a it's a um it's a court case, so you know what I'm saying. They just gotta give their accounts as vivid as possible and as uh, clear as possible for the record for when they go into court. If whomever's lawyer is like objection, blah blah blah, the the federal. Uh, Lawyers or whatever, I don't know the order. Lawyers, federal lawyers, <laughs> that's crazy. Lawyers could basically be like, well, you know, if you object, then I have some evidence to show why why that's being said. Like, but anyway, this shit has gotten so crazy that none other than DJ Academics has entered the fray. Not because, you know, he's just trying to be salacious and get into the fray of all this, but this uh, Baller Alert article I'm about to read to you guys, title states, Academics, a- a- DJ Academics spills the tea on lawyer Tyrone Blackburn. So... DJ Academics recently took his investigative skills to YouTube Live, revealing the complex narrative behind lawyer Tyrone Blackburn. Uh, uh, Behind Tyrone Blackburn's lawsuits. Some of the biggest names in the biz in a recent episode that's, uh, that's got everyone buzzing dj academics dropped some major insights into the world of celebrity lawsuits and y'all it's a story that reads like a hollywood script this is what is being said on the article the twist uh began when little rod reached out for uh dj academics number and not even half an hour later, someone claiming to be Christian Combs' bodyguard hit Act Up with a track, alleging it featured Christian Combs spitting uh, over or rapping over a Cassie song. Talk about a plot twist, right? But it was the bizarre phone call that sent DJ Academics down a rabbit hole, leading to the spotlight being thrown on lawyers or, or lawyer Tyrone Black Tyrone Blackburn. Sorry, uh, leading to the spotlight being thrown on Tyrone Blackburn, known for his salacious lawsuits against celebs. Academics didn't hold back shedding light on Blackburn's history of suing high-profile names like Diddy, Nicki Minaj, I got these, oh, okay, well, Diddy, Nicki Minaj, and T.I. and Tiny. Uh, according to academics, Blackburn's M.O. seems less about uh, justice and more about what looks like a shakedown. Aiming to squeeze out settlements from these stars. So let's break this down real fast. Y'all ready? All right. So, Diddy's yacht drama. So, Blackburn represents a woman claiming she was sexually assaulted on Diddy's yacht. Yet, some something, but yet something's off. As academics points out, the lack of federal investigation, despite the allegations, victims' willingness to co- to uh to basically cooperate. So, I think I brought up one one thing too. I believe that yacht drama. Well, it's, it's two stories. The other story we're going to talk about because it's about Christian. 
So I believe the story that they're talking about, the yacht drama, is with Chris Brown. Y'all remember Chris Brown? Having um, allegations levied against him because some woman said that, I believe the woman said that Chris Brown tried to, I think she said R word her on Diddy's yacht. Do y'all remember that? Now, so much so, let's move on. Christian Combs accusation. Y'all can't see Christian all that well. So. Uh, here we go. Right here. Well, y'all really can't see that all that well. Either, so, we'll do this. so, another lawsuit was thrown at Diddy's son, Christian Combs, over an alleged uh, assault on a yacht. Academics notes that Little Rod was also present that night. But he wasn't. Now, I'll repeat, he wasn't uh, with, or he wasn't in the same part of the boat that uh, Christian uh, was on. So, let's clear that up. Um, so, moving forward. Tiffany Haddish. So, Tiffany Haddish's skit gone wrong. So, if you guys remember... Tiffany Haddish had a skit with, and this is the funny part, because I hate when people can't read or can't say people's names right now. I know I fucked up on Ethiopia's last name, only for the simple fact that it's a long-ass last name, all right? I don't have time. But anyway, uh, but people was calling comedian Aries Spears Aries as in the Greek god Aries Aries where the fuck do you get Ari from Aries anyway that's just a great uh, I got with, with certain people who come online say what they gotta say but they can't read or sound out words but All right, so Tiffany Haddish, right? Now, I picked this picture for a reason, because Jason Lee has something to do with this as well. Now, academics brought to the, uh, brought to light a clip from uh, Jason Lee's show. If you watch his show, you'll see the video, where Jason Lee put Blackburn in the hot seat. Uh, the focus, his involvement in the lawsuit that accused Tiffany Haddish of participating in a child sex abuse skit. Now, y'all remember me showing a little bit of that, of the skit, and I think I, I think I showed it. Yeah, I did show it. I did show the skit. And yeah, it, it was very grueling. It was very damning, and it didn't really look right for both Tiffany being in it, her leaving the kid there, and then leaving in every skit, and then, you know, Aries doing what he was doing. Look, I'm not here to judge anybody, but the shit didn't look right. Now, uh, academics showcased Jason Lee's screenshot of chats and even played a call from Blackburn himself laying, laying bare accusations of Blackburn's empl employing what academics describe as extortion tactics for financial payoff. So, in the video, uh, Jason Lee is basically telling them, like, yo, like, I told you not to pursue this case simply because Tiffany has been dealing with this, uh, with this craziness for a long time now. It's only a shake down for money because the woman's jealous that Tiffany Haddish ha uh, has gotten a shot in Hollywood and she hasn't. That's the only reason why that this uh, that this case is coming back up because it has been tried time and time again before 
and the woman has not gotten a settlement out of court yet. Of which the last time when this skit came about, that's when Tiffany Haddish thought that all is lost and I might as well just settle out of court, of which Tiffany did. Now, I know the both of them, both Tiffany and Aries, didn't think that, hey, uh, this skit will never, ever come out to see the light of day. It's nothing for me to worry about. My career will go on until it did. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that Aries is done, but Aries is, is on a Canadian tour right now while still touring the United States every year. Like, it his should be packed and it'd be sold out. So his career isn't done. He's still doing comedy. Now, when it comes to movies and shit, Aries, for, it, well, in my personal opinion, Aries hasn't been in a movie since like two, like the mid, mid to late 2000s. So we have nothing to worry about there. Which I believe uh, his last movie was some like Snoop horror film or whatever. Like Snoop Dogg did like a horror type film, like a hood horror film. And like it was all right, but it wasn't the best. But at the same time, that's what um, that's what happens. Like he did the film. That was his last film that he's been in. Life goes on. He still does comedy and he still tours around the world. So, what are we doing? But anyway, uh, Jason Lee basically was stating to Tyrone uh, in his Tyrone Blackburn, his lawyer, and I believe Jason Lee's lawyer was also on the call as well. I believe it was a FaceTime call, but um. Everything that happened in the call was basically Jason Lee stating to Tyrone Blackburn is don't pursue the case. The case isn't worth it simply because Tiffany has been getting uh, Tiffany has been getting uh, shook down by this woman for years now and it's not worth pursuing. That's all that's it. So moving on from there. Nicki Minaj's husband under fire. So Kenneth Petty, a.k.a. Zoo, faced a lawsuit for alleged essay with Blackburn alleg uh, allegedly trying to uh, leverage media pressure against Nicki Minaj to settle. Nicki, Min uh, Nicki Minaj lawyer labeled the attorney's conduct as this was, uh, disgraceful and beyond shocking, pushing for sanctions uh, Minaj, uh, uh, alongside her legal team, argues that Tyrone Blackburn deserves significant uh, re repersecutions. I don't know what that means. Anyway, they're advocating for him to face f uh, financial penalties and a referral to the federal court's attorney disciplinary committee. Their argument hinges on the claims that Blackburn has been engaging in uh, what is it? Friv what is this word? I want to say frivolous, but it's not frivolous. Oh, I haven't got the full word yet. Oh. Oh, well, frivolous. <laughs> That's what it was. Okay. Uh, so Blackburn has been engaging in frivolous and uh, in extortion, extortionate legal actions against Minaj, which they describe as utterly deplorable. So I'm guessing this is when uh, Kevin, what his name Kevin or Kenny? What the hell is this boy's name again? Kenneth, so Kenny, so 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 Petty, Nicki Minaj's husband, his accuser came back out, and she was making her runs on 
social media and on podcasts and stuff like that. Basically, bringing the case back up of him essaying her when she was 14. I believe he was, what, 17 or something like that at the time or a little older. And she basically brought the case back up and basically stated that she wanted payment for his wrongdoing. And since Nicki Minaj had just married the dude, she brought the case back up simply because she wanted some money. And Nicki Minaj was the one who was going to pay that money out because we don't know what Kevin Petty does for a living other than be the wife of Nicki Minaj. So, um, with that being said, Nicki Minaj, she didn't buckle. She didn't falter. She basically did what she had to do, and that was... Number one, not settle. Number two, fight the case. And I believe the girl, um, I believe the girl lost the case as well. So, with that, um, I don't know what else to say. So, ending this, DJ Academics dive. It, uh, into these uh, cases exposing a pattern that's hard to ignore raising questions about the intentions behind Blackburn's legal battles it is a quest for justice or a strategic play for settlements which academics insights uh, insights offer a compelling look into these allegations it's clear this saga is far from over, leaving us all watching closely to see how it unfolds. But we also have to look at this as well. Right? Let me take this down. This is also what we have to pay attention to. Now, uh, let's see. Where was it? legal battles. Okay. So, if Tyrone Blackburn is doing this, he's making salacious accounts with all of these people, right? And he's being brought up in front of the grievance committee and all of that. Let me ask a question. And he just died, right? And I will be taking certain quotes from Judge Joe Brown or what he said last night. So Judge Joe Brown basically said that O.J. Simpson was basically framed for the murder of Nicole Brown. Now, no one knows who killed Nicole Brown, and no one knows who killed the other guy. All we know is that Nicole Brown uh, uh, was at a restaurant. She came home. The guy, the guy who got killed along with her saw that she left her sunglasses at the restaurant that he worked at. He took the sunglasses, and later on, he went to he went to her house to drop them back off. So right around the time when this was going on, what's his name? Ron Goldman. Yeah, I think his name was Ron Goldman. So Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman got slain that night by who knows. The indication was that OJ did it. But with his legal team that got him off from his charges, evidence showed that he didn't do it. Now, the city, well, the state of California basically put those charges up on, on OJ. But 
Judge Joe Brown said that Nicole Brown was a junkie and she owed money to almost every drug dealer of on or hold on in the city of LA of I guess the east side of LA. So that's getting into Mexican gang and you know Colombian gang territory, East LA. So she's getting her cocaina from basically the cartel, and she owes money to the cartel. What do you think is gonna happen? Y'all saw what happened to those police officers in the movie End of Watch. They basically found a human trafficking house. And from there, their lives started spiraling out of control. To where one of the police officers died. That was, uh, what was his name? Michael Pena. Michael Pena's character got killed. While Jake Gyllenhaal's character was shot. And at an inch of his life, he almost died. He survived what happened. Now, when you start fucking with the cartel, that's what happens to you. There's no question of, you know, maybe I can pay them off. No, once they have your scent, you're done. That's just what it is. Now, the, the state of California, by way of the city of L.A.'s infrastructure of how they work, did they levy those charges against O.J. Simpson? Well, in my personal opinion, yeah, they did. Some people will say, well, if O.J. wasn't fucking with that white girl, he would have never uh, went through that. I agree with that as well. Quit fucking with them white women. As I have told you guys, I'm sober off white women. It's like a five-step program that, that I'm going through for it. Not saying that that's all that I fuck with is white women. It's just every so often, you know, you know, gotta have a white woman sometime. You know what I'm saying? But I don't date white women no more. But with OJ, he loved the <laughs> he loved the sugar. You know what I'm saying? White sugar, not brown sugar. He liked the white sugar. He loved the bleached flour. So, you know, it just is what it is. I can name numerous other cases out here of stupid charges being put on people, such as, and this part ends the main uh, the main topics portion of the night. And tonight's random topics portion of the night's overview is Jonathan Majors walks walks free from jail and Alex Jones is getting what the hell did I put is I have no idea what I wrote hold on let me see where the hell this is in this paper okay Alex Jones is gearing up to sue government agencies so as i said when it comes to salacious charges being put on somebody such as let's bring his ass up jonathan majors we all know what happened with that i get this article from the bbc hold on <laughs> wait a minute hold on pause nigga So I get this article from the BBC and the title is Jonathan Majors avoids jail and is sentenced to probation. So, um, let me switch gears here. So this is what happened the day of his sentencing. I'm thinking morning. Jonathan Majors greets the paparazzi on his way into court for sentencing. The judge sentenced the actor to one year of domestic violence counseling.
Majors was found guilty of harassing and assaulting his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, in New York City. As part of the sentence, the judge granted a full protective order for his ex. If Majors violates that, he could face a year in prison. He was caught on camera shoving Jabari inside an SUV after an argument back in 2023. The jury in the case was presented with this jaw-dropping surveillance tape that prosecutors said chronicled what happened during the night of the altercation. Majors recently starred in Creed 3 and the latest Ant-Man movie from Marvel. All right, none of that's important. But we all get it, right? Salacious charges was put up against Jonathan Majors for basically doing nothing. He did absolutely nothing. He basically was minding his own motherfucking business while being on his phone while a white woman was right next to him. She saw a text come through that basically said in the text messages that I can't wait to see you. And with that being said, she snatched his phone away from him. Now, can't we call that stealing? Like, what misdemeanor charge would that be? Because simply, if that was your property, Grace Jabari, then he would have just let things go. But you took a piece of his property, of which he got in trouble for trying to get his property away from the woman. Now, that's a misdemeanor within itself because that's, that's assault. But I believe in the court documentation or the or the statements that was given that Grace Jabari or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not the statement given in court by the driver that Grace hit Jonathan first. Okay. So no charges was levied against the white woman, but the black dude gets all of the charges levied against him. Man, can we get the fuck out of here? Oh, hell no! What the fuck was that? Now, with that being said, let's get into this article. I don't believe I... Hold on, let me see if I, I still need this at all. I don't, think I, need, I don't think I need this anymore. I think I'm up to... Yeah, I'm done with this, so I can drop this drop that all right so let's get into it so like I said the article that I'm about to read to you guys come from the BBC. Pause, nigga. All right. Don Jonathan Majors dropped by Marvel after his conviction must now complete a 52-week domestic violence intervention program. Damn, mine didn't even take that damn long. It was only a six-week process. God damn. He, avoid he avoided up to a year in jail after being convicted of third-degree assault and second degree harassment last year. Majors must also continue with mental health therapy. Uh, the judge ruled Justice Michael Gaffey, I don't know if I have his, him up here, nah, only Grace Jabari. I didn't get to get his picture, but anyway. Um, so, what's the judge's name? Let me change this off last song. All right, where the hell is this judge's name? Okay, Justice Michael Gaffey of the stat. Hold on, I think I do have his picture. Hold on, give me a second.
No, I don't have his picture. I forgot I couldn't really pinpoint who he was. So anyway, Justice Michael Gaffey of the state Supreme Court in Manhattan sentenced majors to conditional discharge after noting that both sides in the case agreed the charges did not warrant jail time. Yeah, because he fucking ran away from her. That's why. Like, like what the hell is wrong with these fools, yo? Like, like why are... Why did the case even happen in the beginning? That's all I want to know. But anyway. Uh, instead, the judge ruled majors must complete the in-person batterers intervention program in Los Angeles, where the actor lives. Majors had played villain. Okay, King of Conqueror. No, okay, whatever. He starred in uh, whatever. All right. In, in her impact statement Jabari so let me show her is she ugly anyway um Jabari Jabari where is it impact statement Jabari said she had been left in emotional and physical pain the court heard majors and Jabari were in a car in New York when she saw a text message from another woman on Majors' phone, Majors' phone, which said, Wish I was kissing you right now. Prosecutors say that when she took the phone, Majors grabbed her, twisted her arm behind her back, and hit her in the head to get it back. Okay, there's the misdemeanor on his part. Because he should have never grabbed her number one he should have just asked her for for his phone back she would have said no ask again Uh, look i'm not gonna ask you again grace i just want my phone back she would have said no again and who was this person then that's when you grab the phone doesn't make it any better but it does show that you asked her twice. She didn't adhere to any of your um, your commands to get your property back. So now you have to take matters into your own hands. And not saying that it's, that's a good thing. I'm just saying that since that happened, then he had to protect himself some way. Just saying. All right, so Grace Jabari was left with a fractured finger, bruising, and a cut behind her ear, which she did to herself. Majors uh, had denied assaulting Miss Jabari and filed charges against her, claiming she was the one who assaulted him, which was true. Anyway, prosecutors said the case lacked, uh, lacked merit. Majors did not co- uh, comment as he left the courtroom. In a recent interview with ABC News, the actor said he was shocked at the guilty verdict and he believes he would eventually be back in the work, back to work in Hollywood. I pray that I do, he said. So, good thing he didn't go to jail for this dumb shit because if the white bitch would have never started the shit, then majors wouldn't have never been in the goddamn courthouse to begin the uh secondly and y'all could have lived y'all's lives happily ever after but one thing i will tell uh uh jonathan nigga you got a haitian woman now this is making good i'm talking about uh 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 Megan, Megan good has haitian uh heritage i believe let me um sec let me research that real fast so I don't think that I'm lying. Uh, let me see. Where's her IMDb? Not IMDb, but her uh, her wiki. I believe she is Haitian. Now.
Let's see. Good has starts, uh, stated that her paternal grandmother is Jewish and African. Uh, my father was Cherokee and something else. My dad's mother's my dad's mother's Puerto Rican and black, and his father was from Barbados. All right, so uh, she has a Jewish, a Jewish and African grandmother, uh, Cherokee grandfather, a Puerto Rican, uh, my dad's mom, hold on, her maternal, which means her mom's mom, or grandmother was Jewish and African, her father's mom, or her, her mother's father was Cherokee Indian, and her dad's mom, or, hold on, she said my dad's mother's Puerto Rican and black and his father was from Barbados. So she's a little bit of everything. She's a mutt, basically. Um, I thought she was Haitian for some reason. But, you know, same, you know, same fucking thing, you know, a black, black motherfucker in the Caribbean. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, they all still do voodoo. It's just that Haitians are, are, are more prominent in it. Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, Santeria, which is still voodoo. And then you got, you know, Barbados, which I have heritage from as well. Voodoo, like it's it's all the same damn thing. Anyway, that concludes that portion of the uh, the show. What is this about again? Do I need this. All right, no, that's not important. Just gotta get him picked up. All right, so moving on to the next topic. So Alex Jones confirms intent to sue FBI and CIA. Uh, I get this article from the, uh, I get this article from the Paradise. I don't know if they're credible or not, but this is what they had to say about what's going on with that. So, Alex Jones joined, uh, joined Benny Johnson, which is this guy, he's a podcast host, to discuss the bombshell undercover footage that emerged Tuesday from Sound Investigation. Sound investi- uh, Investigation showing a CIA contractor admitting the agency vindic- vindictively went after the InfoWars radio hoax. And this is what was said. Bring this up. This is what was said. You can kind of put anyone in jail if you know what to do. How? Does the Bureau practice entrapment a lot? We get really close. We call it a nudge. A nudge. A nudge. Mm. Sometimes you just gotta give them a quick look just to see what happens. Sometimes you like the fuse and just wait for it to pop. Nothing like putting up a big social media thing to like really get people mad. Alex Jones. Yeah, so we were after him. You are? We did what we wanted. Which was what? Took his money away. Chop his legs off. All right. 
Gavin Oblenis is a contracting officer at the CIA. Oblenis worked for the FBI in 2021 and 2022 in the San Diego office, moved on to Homeland Security where he conducted asylum interviews at the southern border, and now works for the CIA managing multi-million dollar contracts across government agencies and private sector vendors. I work for, um, I work like this without, I'm not supposed to tell people any job. I say intelligence, what do you think? CIA? Yep. You work for the CIA? I do. That's incredible. I'm a contracting officer. That's amazing. So I deal a lot with like different agencies. Uh, we're contracting with like uh, Director of National Intelligence to do stuff. We do Navy, Army, any of them really. I just, FBI. I used to work for the FBI. So mm-hmm. through the FBI at me. They're like, here, you used to work there. Oh, I'm permanent. I so, yeah. yeah. Good. Well, why do they call it contracting? Because I do the contract. <laughs> Oblenis spoke to an undercover sound investigations reporter about his work experience involving near entrapment and his employer's involvement with political commentator Alex Jones's legal battles. As long as the Bureau is able to progress far enough to be able to put pro-lifers in jail whenever they want. Yeah. You think that's on the agenda? We can, we can, you can kind of put anyone in jail if you know what to do. How? You set them up. <laughs> you create the situation to where they have no choice but to act on their impulse. And once they act on that impulse, then we call that entrapment. It's a fine line. Is, does the Bureau practice entrapment a lot? Yeah, we get really close. Not officially? No. We get as close as we can. We get as close as we can to it without doing it. So they can entrap some of these pro-lifers into doing things that they don't do. Yeah. We call it a nudge. A nudge. A nudge. Mm. Sometimes you just got to give them a quick look just to see what happens, right? And how does that happen? You put a post out there or you have someone fake profile say something that triggers, that we know is going to trigger them, right? Like, we, we already know your history. If we're t- that point, we already know everything about it. So we're like, oh, this will piss them off. Sometimes you like the fuse and just wait for it to follow, right? Like a railing, Mm -hmm. like a, oh. So when a railing happens, that sometimes the bureau behind it? Yeah, sometimes. Nothing like putting on a fake social media thing to like really get people mad. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, it's fake news. Sometimes it's (laughs) fake. It's embellished a little bit. Who would be like a big influence that you're influencer that you're after you like a now with some of this being said so far this is um this is crazy because they will get into um they will get into how they basically cornered Alex Jones, after the whole Sandy Hook thing of how they basically was going to um, have him basically, uh, uh, what's the word? God damn it. Um, Basically for, um, for Alex Jones to have to uh, commence in basically don't uh uh having to go bankrupt basically because he gets too damn close to the truth and you know cia fbi don't don't want people telling the truth anywhere not even on the internet not in papers or nowhere else and um as well as uh you know with him saying what he said what she said, he didn't actually say it the way that people think that he said it. But I'm gonna have to look that video back up if it's available anywhere. But um, he basically stated that he he has no. Hold on, I, I, I don't want to say this. He basically stated that they came after him after the whole Sandy Hook thing happened and how, ha- and basically them saying that he would, that, or they would, um, 
that they would basically have them go bankrupt or whatever. So here we go. I don't know, like um, I don't even know these names, like a Fox News person or like a Tucker Carlson or like. Uh, oh, I'm sure he's. Right. The other one that they get the loudest, like that. What was his name? The one that said uh, the Sandy Hook didn't happen. Alex Jones. Yeah. So we were after him. You are. Before. Are you still after? Why? Because he's broke. He got found guilty and had to pay like a hundred million dollars. So what, why were you after him? We're not anymore. Just to get the money from him? Yeah. Was that court case used? Was that in CIA? Sure it was. That was the agency thing? Well, actually it was a defamation case. Mm. So it was a civil, <clears throat> not government. But we were looking at all of his followers, commenting, following, like, who's that going to be this too? Right? So even though it's technically not our, well, not the agency, definitely, but the Bureau, for instance, yeah, that's not our purview. It's a civil, it's a civil matter. But uh, since they got all this access to his stuff, and it's there, what can we go find? And did you find anything? I can't tell you. Oh, we did. Uh, but so you know, it's it's just kind of like you know, realize the opportunity that you have. So with Alex Jones, mm-hmm. you were watching him long before anything ended up happening. Probably. It wasn't my office, but I mean, we would, we would have been well aware of what he was doing. And the goal with him was what? Just to bankrupt him? Oh, uh, pretty much. And we like the families. Boom. You see how, how he admitted that? Without having to think about it, he was like, oh, yeah, we, we just chose to go after him and have him go bankrupt. So, who else did they do this to? Oh, so y'all remember when well that was more so adidas or so or whatever or could have been the federal government that did it simply because kanye west was saying what he was saying about you know jewish people or whatever and he had his his uh his bank accounts frozen for it now how they could do that i have no idea it has to be some sort of legal loophole that they jumped over in order for that to happen. Or can they do that? So, I don't know. Let's keep going. Do it. And, uh, what? We let the families do it. Were they encouraged to do that by the Bureau? Like, nudged? We don't encourage people. But, like, we, we just say there's no federal statute being broken, but you do have the option for a civil, for a civil case, and it's a pretty good case, nice. in our opinion. So, oh, that makes so much sense. I have a cousin who's a lawyer, so that's a lot of these cases, they're, they're kind of encouraged by the FBI. Yeah, like, there's nothing federally, federal law we can do, but civilly, we can go at them that way, and chop his legs off. And they did. Yeah. So the FBI was happy. We didn't care. We were like, oh. Basically, the citizens did your job. Yeah. Wow. So you can encourage a civil lawsuit. You can encourage. Educate. What can you do with people like Alex Jones now? Is he still out there? Yeah. He's still chirping. He can chirp. They still watching? Yeah. Why? He did what we wanted. Which was what? We took his money away. Uh, we shut him up for a while. You're never going to shut him up for anybody. Well, unless you put him in prison. Yeah. But again, he didn't do anything to go to prison. Being ignorant is not a crime, though it should. <laughs> it is. I mean, what? Okay, so with that being said, right? If he did no crime, other than, you know, just talking shit, of which he said he did later apologize for, how the fuck did he get brought up on any sort of charges of, I don't even know what the hell the charges were. Let's just say it was defamation charges of of the kids or whatever. So if he later comes back and says, I was wrong about what I said and I apologize for everything, How's it that uh, the FBI can educate the state of Connecticut, I think it was Connecticut or Texas, one of them, to 
then pursue him in a civil lawsuit. And not only that, levy the 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 was it the budget of France or or the economy, I mean, of France. The man owes like one point something billion dollars. N- not billion. Trillion, I believe it is. I think it's between billion and trillion dollars. How the fuck can this man pay this? His kids, 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 kids will be paying that debt off. That's crazy. If you could bring a nudge. He, he did incite a riot, like Cheeto. He didn't encourage people to go shoot people. He didn't, so he didn't do it. Additionally, O'Glennis states that he knows and works with FBI agents who were undercover in the January 6th Capitol riot, estimating about 20 field agents were there undercover. While O'Glennis notes that they were not involved in violence, this appears to be the first admission of undercover FBI agents in attendance. I thought you said that there were FBI agents in the crowd at J6. There are. There always are when there's a big protest in D.C., just in case it gets out of hand like that. They, but there, they wasn't, doing, there wasn't enough to turn that tide. I mean, I'm talking they maybe have it 20. You needed a thousand to get rid of that crowd. So they had like, tw- oh, that was on, oh, just 20? Yeah, just to go through and there and see what they can hear, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. That's, yeah, definitely. They needed a thousand. So he basically admitted, of which we wasn't supposed to know during Janteen, that. Yes, there were federal agents, CIA and FBI, in the crowds listening to what was going on. And a lot of people may be thinking who were there, who are probably now out of jail, how did they know to come and get me? Well, number one, D.C. is heavenly surveilled. And number two, Probably was the CIA agents out there taking pictures. No, they have gadgets such as glasses and stuff like that that they could have been taking pictures of everyone that were there. So, since we all know now that they were out there, we wasn't supposed to know that information. I hope everybody knows that. We wasn't supposed to know that CIA and FBI were out, was out in the crowd during January 6th. We wasn't supposed to know that. It was supposed to look like a bunch of crazy white people went out there and wanted to steal the election back for Trump because Trump told them to, of which Trump never said to go to the uh to uh Capitol Hill and take the election back. He never said that at all. Never. I was at least wow. well, that's also Capitol Police jurisdiction. They're in charge. So that why they didn't have more on hand, I don't know. The BR didn't really want people knowing that they were in the crowd. Mm-hmm. That would be overstepping their bounds. A little bit. Do people know that? Do, Why? Do people know that the hero was in the crowd? No, and probably never will. Do you know agents that We know now, motherfucker. <laughs> Are there? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. So the agency now. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, let me get this ready. The contract man. So since we know that information, how about this? Jones tells Johnson, following the revelations, he's looking into filing a lawsuit against the FBI and CIA over potential civil rights violations. Here we go. But now that this has come out, this is a FBI agent, a CIA boss. He's a contract manager over large contract operations. That's a boss. Uh, that's like a mini section chief saying all of this 
and and admitting all of this like it's no big deal. He needs to be subpoenaed by Congress. Uh, I am planning uh, to launch a lawsuit uh, against the CIA and the FBI. We have to bring all this out. And right as my bankruptcy comes to a close and, and right as all this stuff's being finalized, it's really God working here that this came out at this time. You just said you were planning on suing the federal government. What would a Alex Jones versus the U.S. government look like? Well, I'm talking to different law firms right now that specialize in this. In fact, when I get off the feed with you, I'm going to get back on the phone with the lawyers. It's obviously a civil rights violation. It's a government racketeering operation uh, using cutouts. And look, I mean, they come after my mother, my father, my wife uh, in these mediations. They've said, listen, just come out against the Second Amendment and we'll drop all this. I mean, they've done that repeatedly. Um, and uh, they've even said, listen, we're a mafia and there's nothing you can do to stop us. To my face, in front of my lawyer, in front of Norm Pass. Uh, and, and so they're very arrogant. I mean, these are the sellouts. These are the traitors. These are the people that really love being under the corrupt FBI's wings, under the CIA's wings. They get a thrill. They get to go out and persecute fellow Americans, lie about them, say all these horrible things, and, and say, you said it, steal your identity, silence you so they can all pile in on you, make movies about themselves with judges and flashbulbs, and, oh, we're so great. We, we went out and got the big Goliath. No, no, you guys are the Goliath. I'm the David. You misrepresented what I did to make me a monster, and it's backfired. So when you say you're going to file a civil rights lawsuit against the government over this, this is something you've clearly talked about. You've retained counsel on this. Would you go on First Amendment grounds that they uh, eliminated your right to free speech, that they, they the, the right to a free press? And it seems like so much of what you do is, of course, crystallized in the First Amendment first for a reason. I've been talking to four different law firms, and I'm literally supposed to be on with one of them five minutes ago. I will come back with you tomorrow. I will yep. come back with you today. I love your show. It's huge. But absolutely, I've got to get the wheels on this thing rolling. I mean, we're, we're, we've got a lot of options. But again, it's not for me. It's about to put it out in court and show the evidence and then drag them out in the light with discovery and show what they've really done. And it's about congressional hearings, and it's about stopping these rogue agencies that have become uh, domestic KGB operations. And if Elon Musk wants to help me, I know he's been back in a lot of lawsuits, uh, you know, out there for freedom. Uh, I would love to see the truth came out because when I told him in that two and a half hour interview we did three, four months ago with um, Mario Defal, uh, he, he said he wanted to hear, you know, the long story. So I told him, I talked like 10 minutes telling him the truth about what happened with him. and the PR firms. He goes, oh, yes, the PR firms, which is the intelligence agency's mouthpiece system, how they did all that, how they created this Alex Jones that didn't exist and then had a show trial. And then the very same law firm suing me or the suit me is the one suing Elon Musk. So that's also a wake up call for Elon. So the only thing that we can do from here is speculate. All right. So with that being said, So with that being said, let's get to the uh, last points of this, um, of this. So, he needs to be subpoenaed by Congress, Jones uh, said, referencing to Gavin O'Blennis, <clears throat> the CIA contractor. Featured in Sound Investigations video, I am planning to launch a lawsuit against the CIA and the FBI. We have to bring all this out and and right as my bankruptcy comes to a close, and right as as all this stuff is being finalized, it's God's work. work uh, it's God's work working here that this came out at this time. Jones added he's currently speaking to several lawyers and would like to see congressional inquiries uh, into the man's claims that uh, cl claims so that the full scope of the Intel agency's of, uh, efforts could come to light. Earlier Tuesday, Jones urged tech entrepreneur uh, Elon Musk to call for a congressional investigation into the matter following concerns that targeting 
could be a uh, violation of free speech. So, you know, what was basically said there was basically uh, Jones basically already knowing that the federal government was after him. They said that they were looking into him for several years. I believe Alex Jones coined a term 9-11 9-11 was an inside job. And I believe probably from there up to when Obama got elected and, you know, all these videos came out, the Obama deception and loose change and stuff like that. If you guys haven't seen any of those uh, movies, I suggest you guys go and see those movies. Because uh, those movies shine like not on uh, him, on, on, on Barack Obama, but on election fraud and how presidents are actually picked and uh, when it comes to the U.S. economy, how the U.S. basically contorts and shifts certain things into place. So, you know, most of the time, so inflation can go up or inflation can go down or what have you, which it's happening right now. So I don't know, man. Maybe um maybe he has something here. And you know, this will be going straight to federal court. Maybe or he said it's a civil might be a civil suit, so maybe not. But I don't know, man. Time will tell with this. If there's any more information on this, I will bring it here. The market speaks live. But just note, y'all, this can happen to anybody. Anybody who this man says, yeah, we've been, you know, following this guy uh, for years. You may think you d- you done nothing wrong, but it's a possibility you can be some someone that's just like Alex Jones. So that concludes the random topics portion of the week. Well, let's get into something real quick. So real, real quick, real quick. Just like Fresh and Fit and everyone and everyone else in the Manosphere, certain videos come out when it comes to certain people uh, giving relationship advice. So this gentleman right here gives some of the most funniest uh relationship advice ever here we go now dude came up with this list and i'm just gonna read it to y'all remember i did not make this shit but i'm finna i'm finna preach to y'all and y'all tell me how y'all feel in the comments it says no dick fellas we cannot be out here in 2024 just dropping dick off we gotta chill out on smashing everything breathing she don't got a job no dick she get paid less than 12 dollars an hour no dick live with her parents Hold up, if she gets paid twelve dollars an hour, no dick, nigga. Like, come on now. Like, what is wrong with y'all? What is wrong with y'all? Did you... That means a chick would be making twelve dollars less than me. No dick. Like, come on now. I'm not about to take care of your ass. You can't even help me if I need help. The fuck? No dick. I always claim she hungry. No dick. Cash app info in her bio. No dick. I always in drama. No dick. Wear them fishnet outfits. No dick. She ain't got... Well, I, don't know, I don't know about that. Come on now. She wearing one of them sexy ass fishnet outfits. She might have to get this dick. Just saying. Yeah, I, ain't, I don't have my <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. All her edges, but she used them little baby hairs that come off the lace wig. No dick. You take her out to dinner and she wants you to pay for her friends too. No dick. Just pay your end of the bill. She smell like salmon and lemon pepper. No dick. Bruh. This nigga. The list is longer, but this is all I can screenshot. So I'm reading the next one. She called too many dudes, brother and friend. No dick. She going now clubbing every weekend, two or three days after week. No dick. Definitely no dick. Definitely no dick. Too much makeup caked up on her face like cake. 
no dick. If she the dark skinned friend that look like Michael Jackson, no dick. If she the light skinned friend that look like Michael Jackson, no dick. If she If she look like Michael Jackson at all, I don't want to touch her. Like, <laughs> for all we know, that's a man underneath of there. Bruh. She too skinny in her panties baggy. No dick. If she smell like barbecue weenie water, no dick. I ain't going to say the ones that don't have a car because there's some fine bitches with no cars that can get fun. I, I second that. I second that. And remember, if y'all like my videos, like I know y'all. All right. So... That's it. That's that's all that I got uh, today. But that shit was funny, though. Like, I was sitting there laughing my ass off when I was uh, viewing that or whatever. But um, there's anyone out there who wants to pop up, uh, hit the link that's pinned to the top, and uh, we can talk about it. But, but in the meantime, in between time, we're going to do a show summary. So I started the show off with... Myron taken up for his girlfriend, Fresh, and his baby mama. Uh, and then, you know, he, you know, docks the chick. The shit look weird if you look at the video. Like, it looks like they just took, uh, they they went to Excel and translated some shit in English to Chinese. That's what it looked like. Um, But yeah, you know. Be wait. Uh, I hope he's waiting for that child support because uh, we ain't gonna pay it for him. Also talked about OJ's passing. Uh, I also talked about um, my my fifth year anniversary ch- uh, channel anniversary. Uh, it's been five years since I've been doing this, and hopefully to many more. Then I got into uh, the Tyrone to Tyrone Blackburn, attorney Tyrone Blackburn, and how a judge basically said that he has to, you know, his actions has to go into the grievance committee to see if what he's doing is basically fraudulent under the color of law and how to practice it as well. Uh, And then DJ Academic stepped into the fold, researched a couple cases that had his name plastered over it, and he basically shown that Tyrone Blackburn does this from time to time when it comes to celebrities. And, you know, we can only see later on if that is the case, if that is true. But we can only take it with a grain of salt and then see what happens from there. Spoke about Jonathan Majors and he how he's not going to jail, but he he's take what she okay. I agree with the domestic violence counseling and the anger management counseling before a year though, a year he has to take this and as well as therapy. Now I agree with that too, but a year for that shit. Come on, yo, stop the bullshit. And then Alex Jones basically was getting probed by federal agency, CIA, FBI and we all know now that they were there during Jan 6. They basically follow people or whatever. If they feel as though that they're, they are a threat to American democracy. And from there, I can only say that everybody watch y'all's back. And then to the uh, gentleman that spoke on, uh, if women are, are able to get dick or not, because of certain things that they want or th- that they won't do, don't give them any dick, fellas. They're not worthy of it. All right, people, um, it's time for me to get on out of here. So I will start the theme music and do some promotions and get y'all on out of here. All right. So with that being said, people, um, only have it ready uh yet okay here we go every friday i do this here podcast called marcus speaks live you can catch me at 8 p.m eastern saratone every friday uh at 8 p.m uh people I do the stream every week you guys can uh check me out either when i'm doing the podcast at 8 or catch the replay 
Uh, Y'all ran up last week's video. It's still running up. I have no idea what the number's on now. Let me check. Uh, the number is at... Number is at 827 views that I got on last week's video. So keep running that up, keep commenting. I will comment back. Uh, and I thank you guys. So thank you. Um, also, my Saturday streams is still on hiatus. Wait on that. Check the community tab. But when I post there, I post my fifth year anniversary picture there. So hope you guys, um, hope you guys follow me. Follow me and pay attention to what I post, to what I put up, because uh, that's for you. It's not for me. That's why I'm putting it out. But don't for, don't forget to come and uh, check me out because you know, like I said, I do this every weekend. It's the freaking weekend, goddamn. Anyway, uh, people, good. Do me a favor. Once you have subscribed, once you have hit the bell icon to all, go to the uh, description box, hit the Rumble link. If you don't have Rumble. Uh, already download Rumble on any app store that you have. Come back to one of these videos, hit the Rumble link, and take you to my channel over there. And then once I get the correct amount of subscribers over there, I can start simulcasting from not just from here, but also the Rumble. Uh, so, people, if you ever want to come up and come speak to me, you can. The link is always pinned. All right, the number no longer exists there, but be patient. Uh, I will have the number pretty soon. But um, with that also being said, uh, hit the link, and you do have to follow the rules. And those rules are, rule number one, you must be on camera at all times, that's here on the backstage, and if you want to be seen to the public. Uh, well, rule number two states that if you don't want to be seen, that means to the public, have to have your camera on i'll let you know there's a uh, question back here i want you, I want you guys to answer for me with your name and your answer yes or no and then i'll further accommodate you from there and then what you can do for me please is please mute all background noise go to a nice and cool spot in your house whatever device that you have me on that you'll be in the same room with such as a phone tablet iphone uh, computer tv Turn me down or turn me off. I don't need the feedback from sporting headphones for a better audio experience, not just for myself, but for the viewing audience. And, um, yeah, that's it. Other than, please, like this video, subscribe if you're new here, hit that comment section once this video is done, and please share this to your social medias and to your friends and family. And with that, I'll give y'all some words of wisdom. Uh, focus on getting to the money because we all know money makes the world go around. It makes some people happy, it makes some people miserable. But focus on getting to the money because we all know money makes the world go around. Uh, drink more water, mineral, mineral, mineral water, or um, coconut water, which is my favorite. Uh, work out as well. Uh, and also, mind your own business for uh, mental health purposes or you'll be in therapy. Some people need it, some people don't. But if you don't agree with anything that I said tonight, if you disliked what I said tonight, do your own research. It helps you out in the long run. I have been your host, Marcus. This has been Marcus Speaks Live. People, I thank y'all for watching, and I'll check you guys out next Friday. Peace out, y'all.